coach. All right, coach. Well, it's uh, district time now, so yeah. all the all the games are over with. It's time to go to work, huh? That's right. That's right. It's uh, you know, it was a we had a real tough non-district schedule. Uh, something we're not used to. With last two years, I think we've gone into the district undefeated, um, and this year's very different. We, we're coming off of uh, one where we got beat really bad, and we've lost a close one, and we, and we won one. So um, we've kind of been through it all, and. I think it's, you know, it, I, I hope that it's been good for us. I think it will be good for us. We've got to get a lot better from last week's performance. Uh, I don't think we played very well at all, didn't coach very well. Um, and so, uh, you know, but, but we look forward to this year. It's a new season, it's a new beginning, and, and we look forward to it. Yeah, let's just talk about the, uh, the game last week versus Pearl Pirates. Um, you know, it's and the Jackson teams are always interesting. You know, it's, it's good football up there, and I think that was a quality team. And the thing that stuck out to me was, I thought our offense did better than what the the the, the what, what the scoreboard showed. You know, I mean, I say that because you know we we had threw an interception on the two yard line, we had a fumble down there inside the twenty, and then we turned it over on possessions twice inside the twenty. Right. How frustrating is that as a coach? Frustrating is, and that's kind of been the same story for the past two weeks. Uh, we've been able to drive the ball, but we haven't been able to score. We had 400 yards total offense last week and weren't able to get the ball in the end zone like we needed to. Like you just said, like you pointed out all the times we got down there inside the 20. And, you know, we knew that we needed touchdowns because we were giving up so many touchdowns. And so the field goals, we, we didn't even think about field goals. We knew that in order to keep up with them, we had to score touchdowns. And um, we're just not maintaining drives. I mean, it was hard for us to get, you know, to run the ball up the middle. So we started getting predictable because 99, like I mentioned uh, before we played the game, is really, really good. A missed out all-star that, that just was wrecking us up front and we, that we couldn't do much with them, with him at all. And he was even killing us on the outside run because he, was, he would get to us before we got to the outside a lot. Well, sometimes we had three guys on him and he'd shuck off. That's what happened to the, the fumble. I mean, he, he split a double team. The running back came in, shucked him off. And we just play soft. I mean, both sides of the ball, which is extremely soft. Um, and then I had us sort of out of position a couple of times on defense, which was my fault. But, uh, you know, all those things we have to get corrected. We've got to get tougher. Uh, it wasn't from lack of trying and playing hard. It's just we were just not punching them. We were just accepting it and taking it. And in order for us to, to get better, we're going to have to get tougher and we're going to have to attack more and on defense especially. Uh, so, um, but it was very frustrating not being able to capitalize on offense for sure. I was going to say defense seemed to be the place we struggled a little bit more to in my eyes outside looking in. But mm -hmm. one thing that, that really was kind of fun to watch, I wish it was I wish it was us doing it, was that their quarterback and that run pass op, run pass option look. Um, How is that hard to like when you play a team like that? We don't see that a whole lot on the coast, um, and you played you know some. Some uh, guys that are doing a little trick play, you know, trickery plays, wing the wing tee and double wing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How how hard is it to match up against somebody like that? You don't see that often, very often. Well, the main thing was uh, for us in that particular game was because we we were in position. The main thing is when you have a quarterback that can run like that, and you have a downhill running back that can punish you, and then you got a really good receiver and eight out there as well. You can do that sort of thing because you can put people in space. And that's what they did. They spread you out and they put you in space and force you to have to make one-on-one -on -one tackles in space with number four. And that's something we couldn't, we just, we were not doing a very good job of. And I think our confidence got a little bit down and, and uh, we, instead of attacking him, uh, we were waiting and, and getting in, putting ourselves in more space. Uh, but as far as the, the pass, uh, the pass option, the run pass option, we didn't really get that off of it, but the things that hurt us, we got we were cover three. We let the ball get behind us on, on one of the touchdowns. Uh, one time they came out and uh, we didn't have a corner travel over when we were in zero. A corner supposed to travel over if he didn't have a one. He didn't travel over, so we left a, 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 a wide receiver wide open uncovered. So it was little mistakes like that, not being able to tackle, not being where we we're supposed to be pre-snap, that really hurt us. And uh, you know, obviously that's on me because we didn't get our team lined up right a couple of times. But, uh, but it was more, more, more due to just poor tackling. We were in position most of the time. We just could not tackle him. Was there anything that stood out that we did really well, in your opinion, uh, offense or defense or special teams? You know, I thought, you know, we, we you know, really the, the main thing, I thought Duran had a really good game. I mean, a lot of people were asking me about him after the game. He really showed up. Uh, we were able to get him the ball. He did some things. I thought at times 
our receivers, uh, you know, and our outside guys did a really good job, job blocking on the perimeter. But I can't say that was great because there were so many times where we missed it. Uh, we, 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 this is the thing about us right now is we've got three or four guys that can do good things with the ball in their hand, but it's not translating over when the ball is not in their hand. And we got to do a little bit better of that, better job of that. And then when they have a good player on the defensive line, we have to do a better job blocking him. Uh, as far as the good things, I don't know. I didn't see a whole lot of good, to be honest with you. Uh, I just I was very disappointed in the performance. I was very down after it. But uh, in this in this business, you can't uh, you can't think about it too long. You got to think about you know uh, you know think about improving all the things that that weren't good, and and that's what we've been focusing on this week. And we've got it behind us now, and we're we're moving on to Dallasville. Um. One thing kind of fun, I guess, that came out of the game, uh, primetime Neon Deion Sanders was there watching the game. I heard he spoke to a couple of the kids. That's a cool experience. I, yeah, I guess I didn't even know, uh, to be honest with you, that he was there. I didn't know until a couple of days later. So I didn't know that he spoke to our kids, didn't see him. Um, so, but that is cool having, uh, you know, someone of that stature uh, be around our kids. I know our kids like, you know, love to see that. And, and uh, so that was awesome. Let's move on to the Diaberville game. So this week, Diaberville coached by Larry uh, Dolan, uh, very good football coach. They always have a very good football team. Their lines are always very physical. Um, you know, I know they're probably going to see that double wing uh, offense we've seen from them for the last couple of years. They got a couple, you know, couple good studs. Number sixteen, the quarterback Garlot, and then number nine, the running back Lenore. What are you uh, expecting to see from them? And then, how do you think we're going to match up? I expect to see them running right downhill at us. That's what I expect to see. Um, that's what they've done to us for the past two years. We haven't done a great job with it. We haven't done a great job with it thus far this year. Uh, so we're going to have to make some changes. We're going to have to do some things. We're going to have to get a little bit more risky and get our guys in the box and get downhill. Uh, that's just what we have to do. We're not a team that can that does very well when we sit back, it seems. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to do some things different, that's for sure. Um, they are very physical up front, like you mentioned. Um, and we, we, our defensive line cannot get knocked back into our linebackers, uh, and our linebackers got to get off blocks. That's just what it's coming down to. It. I mean, they're going to take us to the play most of the time uh, with their guards and, and things like that, with a lot of leads and a lot of powers and counters. They do try to unbalance you, so we're going to have to do a better job getting lined up right, uh, which we've been we've been really stressing and heavily working on. Uh, but but they but they they are they're a team that what they, their identity has been is they mash you and they're tough. And, uh, you know, they got a good, you know, obviously you mentioned number nine, uh, very good. I think he's leading the 6A in rushing yards right now at the moment, I think is what I saw uh, recently. Uh, but you got to remember, that, you know, Colton DeShazo, the 12, he, he, he played tight end for him last year. He's, they got him back there running back sometimes, moving the tight end, moving the wide out. Uh, they moved him around because he's, he's very fast. He's, you know, a 4 5 guy, he's big, he can block, he can catch. Uh, and when they when he when they can get it to him, he does really good things with the ball. So they got a couple of guys, uh, more guys that they get the ball to. Cole Davis, uh, Caleb Williams also comes in. Those guys, you know, I know a lot of people from Bluffsy may know these kids. So um, they do a good job. Uh, that's, that's all it is to it. And, and we got to get lined up, and we're going to have to attack them. You know, we, we can't sit and wait. Our guys going to have to attack them and uh, get our hands on them and, and move and try to move them around. That's just what it comes down to. You know, you, you mentioned them running the ball against us the last couple of years. I looked at the stats before I came in. 162 carries, 12 passes so far on the season. So yeah. that's what they're going to do to everybody. I think they threw it three times last week. Um, so, yeah, that's what they do. I mean, they, you know, they try to get three to four yards a pop. And if, you don't, and if you don't continue to bring it each and every play, if you get soft on any play, at any moment, if you start feeling sorry for yourself or you get soft, that's when they bust you for a big play. So our kids can't do that. Our kids are going to have to be tough. Uh, we have it in that we have it in us. I, I fully believe that. I've seen our team play good. I've seen our team uh, through practice in the summers be tough, and we're, we're going to have to do that. So, all right. Well, let's move. Just talk about the district a little bit. Obviously, it's it's kind of hard to tell everybody coming to, coming off their non district games, um, but you know, Ocean Springs. You know, t it looks like the big dog. You know, Deiberville had a huge win last week against. Picayune, um, I didn't run through this real quick, but Picayune 27-13 uh, to beat Jeff Davis, 27-17. Pedal, which is always a quality program, they put 48 up on them. They won 48-26, and they beat Moffs Point 12 to nothing. So that's Iberville. Uh Ocean Springs obviously had a huge win against George County a couple weeks ago. They were off last week. 
Uh, Harrison Central is another team that I know they've got some personnel issues or uh, challenges right now. But where, where do you where do you see us? We kind of go into the red district. I know we we took look one game at a time. I get it. But as you look at our district right now, I mean, you feel like we could play with uh, with all these boys? I feel like um, we're capable of it. I definitely feel like we're capable of playing with all of them. Um, you know, I think we match up fine in every single game we play. Uh, the, the, the thing we've got to do is there's a lot of improvements that have to be made going from last week into this week and, and uh, that we're going to have to get fixed now or our results are not going to change. And we've really tried to stress that. We've really got, sat down and met a lot about our personnel and, and trying to put our kids in better positions uh, as a coaching staff. And if we do that, uh, and we got to get tougher. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I mean, that, the last week was was the toughest, was the was the was the softest performance uh, of a, any Bluffy team I've ever coached. And we're that, and that's not to say our kids are soft. That's not to say that at all. I know they're not. But we're going to have to get tougher. Uh, we're going to have to attack better. And we're going to have to like on offense. We've got to finish drives. And if we if we do those things, then we'll be fine. But if we don't fix all that now. Uh, the results are not are not going to change, and and I keep telling our kids each and every week that you're going to have to go take it. You got to take it from the teams you're playing. You're not going to be able to walk out there and win. You have to go out there and execute each and every play. And there are plays on offense where it's one or two guys not finishing their block or not finishing the run, and in defense it's one or two guys being out of position, and you just can't have that. It's got to be 11 guys doing their job each and every play. And when we start doing that, we'll be fine. But if we don't do that, if we don't change that. Then, then the results will be what they have been in the recent games. But I definitely think we have the ability uh, to, to win any game we, we have uh, from, from this point forward, 100%. So talk about um, the, the, the status of our health. I know that we had Crazy Seymour look like he may have had an injury that could have been a, a serious one. I mean, how, how, are, how are we feeling as far as being a healthy team? Right now, I think we're fine. I think Grayson's going to be okay. I think we, we, we expect to have him uh, ready if we need him this week. Um, and and, and as, as far as I know, everybody's fine. We've had a couple of guys that we were a little, um, uh, we, that we, we limited their reps this week during practice uh, for some bumps and bruises and things like that. But uh, for the most part, we're, we're good to go uh, as far as I know. So this week is a whiteout week. Uh, you know, I, I can tell you, I really think the changes the Bucks he done did coming into the season, as far as the tailgating and the student section, really just made an impact on the on the feel of the game. Hopefully, that continues to grow. Everybody comes out, does the whiteout, supports uh, Bucks this week. But, um, Coach, what's the final words do you have? Yeah, I think that's that's been the. Uh... That's been one thing that our administration has really stressed is trying to change the game day environment. And I know that it can create an advantage for, for us uh, 100%. I know that, that the Iberville is going to bring a good environment, so it's important for us to do the same thing. I uh, expect our kids to come out with a great attitude and, and, and be a lot more physical this week. And I expect a, a great game out of the Indians, and, and we hope to have all your support. Thank you.